Welcome to Magnificat.tv News, dedicated to bringing you the news of the Church. Today is Wednesday, December 30th, 2020. The Vatican has approved the use of vaccines that do not originate from fetal cells. Those that do have such an origin are only to be used when it is unavoidable. The Pope has addressed his traditional Christmas message to the Vatican Curia. In his message, he insists the need to avoid conflicts and to see the positive side of crises. The Vatican has transferred $1.7 billion to Australia since 2014. The destination of the money is not yet known, but it was not to help the church in that country. The Pope has taken a PCR test to see if he will test positive for COVID-19. This was after he was in close contact with two cardinals of the Curia who have then tested positive. Vaccines that do not originate from human fetuses can be used without moral dilemma. Those that do originate from fetal cells should only be used when no other vaccine is available. A note from the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, approved by Pope Francis, gives the green light only in extreme cases to vaccines produced from cell lines of two fetuses aborted in the 1960s. In the case of the current pandemic, all vaccines recognized as clinically safe and effective can be used with the certainty that recourse to those vaccines does not mean formal cooperation with the abortion from which the cells from which the vaccines were produced were derived, the Vatican document states. On this issue, there have already been two pronouncements in the same direction, that of the Pontifical Academy for Life in 2005 and that of the Doctrine of the Faith in 2008 regarding the rubella vaccine. For the Vatican, when ethically irreproachable, vaccines are not available, it is morally acceptable to use the COVID-19 vaccines that have used cell lines from aborted fetuses in their research and production process. The reasons to consider the use of these vaccines morally illicit is that the type of cooperation to the evil of induced abortion from which these same cell lines come by those who use the resulting vaccines is remote. The moral duty to avoid such passive material cooperation is not binding if a serious danger exists. However, it must be stressed that the morally licit use of this type of vaccine, due to the special conditions that make it possible, cannot in itself constitute a legitimation, even indirect, of the practice of abortion. In fact, the lawful use of these vaccines does not and should not in any way imply moral approval of the use of cell lines from aborted fetuses. At the same time, it is clear that vaccination is not, as a general rule, a moral obligation and that, therefore, vaccination should be voluntary, even though it is recommended, especially to protect the weakest and most exposed. However, those who, for reasons of conscience, reject vaccines produced from cell lines from aborted fetuses must take steps by other prophylactic means and with appropriate behavior to prevent them from becoming vehicles for transmission of the infectious agent. Take advantage of crises to grow, but avoid conflicts. This was the message that the Pope has addressed to the Vatican Curia in his traditional Christmas message. Pope Francis delivered the traditional message to the Roman Curia on the occasion of the Christmas holidays. The pontiff recognized that this is the Christmas of the pandemic and asked to see the positive side of the current crisis and to avoid, at the same time, the extension of conflicts. The crisis of the pandemic, said Pope Francis, is a good opportunity to make a brief reflection on the meaning of the crisis. This scourge has been a not indifferent benchmark and, at the same time, 
A great opportunity to convert and recover authenticity. The Church, said the Pope, is a body in perpetual crisis precisely because it is alive, but it must never become a body in conflict with winners and losers. In this way, it will spread fear, become more rigid, and impose a uniform logic, far from the richness and plurality that the Spirit gave it. Australian financial authorities are investigating the transfer of $1.7 billion to their country by the Vatican. The Vatican transferred $1.7 billion to Australia since 2014 without the knowledge of Australian bishops in a total of 400,000 transactions. That's an average of 60,000 transactions a year. Almost 200 transactions a day of about $4,000 each. Despite the enormity of the total amount of the transfers, several high-ranking leaders of the Church in Australia, speaking on condition of anonymity, said they were surprised by the news and were unaware of the fund transfers. The transfers coincide with the appointment of Australian Cardinal George Pell as Prefect of the Ministry of Finance in 2014 and his efforts to clean up corruption, so it seems likely that the money was fleeing the Vatican to avoid detection. The transfers accelerated during the period when Cardinal Pell was facing investigations in Australia and reached their peak when he was outside the financial control of the Vatican. After two cardinals of the Curia have become infected with COVID, the Pope has taken a PCR test. The results of the test are not yet known, even though 10 days have passed. The Apostolic Almsman, Polish Cardinal Konrad Kraskowski, who is in charge of carrying out the works of charity on behalf of Pope Francis, has been admitted with pneumonia due to the coronavirus at the Gemelli Hospital in Rome. Cardinal Bertello, president of the Gobernatorato, the body that governs Vatican City, has also tested positive for the virus. No further information about his health has been given. After this information was known, the Pope underwent an analysis, the details of which are still unknown. He was in direct and unprotected contact with the almsman shortly before it was known that he was infected. If you wish to be up to date on what is happening in our church, please follow us online at www.catolicosonline.org. Best wishes for the new year, and we will see you next week, God willing.